Hi everyone, after a long time I'm here again with a new uh, video review about a lens. This time is the Meiki 7.5 2.8 fisheye lens for Fuji X mount. Uh, I'm not sponsored by Meiki, this lens, uh, I bought this lens with my own money. As you can see, this lens is made for APS-C only uh, cameras. Uh, is available <coughs> uh, with other uh, bayonet mount like Nikon, Canon, Sony and so on. These are the specifications. They are similar or the same as the 7 Artisan 2.8. Um, probably uh, the Meiki is a, a rebrand of that lens but with, uh, I think, a better multi-coated uh, layer on the glass. Let's see the lens. As you can see, the lens is very, very small. It has a push cap that is a little bit loose, in my opinion. I would prefer a better, a tighter fit. And in the rear, we, are, we have the classic bayonet. Nothing different from other lenses for uh, Fuji is branded Meiki it has a fixed lens lens suit lens shade sorry a very nice and smooth focus uh, ring with a very short range as most of the fish eyes and the aperture ring has some clicks very light but uh, there are clicks is not clickless compared to the other fish eyes like the classic uh, Sam Yang uh, 8 mm the Meiki is a little bit smaller and lighter also comparing to another fish eye the TT Artisan 7.5 is lighter and is smaller so <coughs> it's very, a very portable lens in my opinion let's mount it on my XC3 here we go as you can see the lens is very very small very compact nice to take around if you want to do some pictures around your city or during traveling okay let's look at those some samples now it's time to check the overall image quality of this lens. I did the six shot from 2.8 to f16 and I will zoom in maybe on a single frame is better. Okay, 100%. Here we are at the center of the image and the sharpness and contrast is quite good but uh, here on the left side uh, where there is the information panel and where I focus it at around one meter we can see the image is a little bit soft but I think it's more a lack of contrast a little bit of haze and on the left side of the frame the image is uh, soft we can see here and also on the right side the image is a tiny bit on the soft side if we go to f4 the quality on contrast and sharpness at the center increased and we can notice a little bit more of sharpness and contrast less haze on the image and also here we have an increase in our overall sharpness and contrast just uh, a bit on the sharp side also but um, better than at the full aperture here too we can see a little bit of sharpness uh, more than 2.8 but still on the soft side uh, here too we can still see some chromatic aberration purple fringing here and here alongside the edges now we go up uh, to 5.6 and here we are nearly at the top of the quality of this lens 
sharpness is nearly at, at the top, I think uh, at around 95% of this lens. And especially here on the, on the left side of the frame, we can see the image is clearly sharper and uh, also more contrasty and we have a better um, control on the haze. We can go to 100% here, still a little bit of uh, purple fringe and chromatic aberration, but the sharpness is going to the good side. F8, in my opinion, is the best setting you can use uh, on this lens as an aperture. Here the quality is very good, good contrast, nearly no haze. Sharpness is spot on, and here also on the information panel, we can see the quality is really good, even at the nearly the end of the ages. We can clearly see here the, the font is readable, and also on the right side, we are a lot more sharpness and less chromatic aberration, still a little bit visible, but nothing that you can you can fix you cannot fix it with a, a good uh, image editor. And then we can go to f11, but honestly, I will never use um, this aperture cl so closed because uh, the lens start to have uh, some uh, diffraction. You can see here is losing contrast and also here on the left side and if we go to the right side we can clearly see that the, the image has a, some diffraction in and f16 is the worst in my opinion even a, wor is even worse than 2.8 and is not out of uh, out of uh, focusing but uh, is a uh, is the fraction coming in and then here you can see it and also here and on the right edge is the same situation you can see the image is soft so as i told you in my opinion the best setting is f8 we can clearly see i do a comparison from 2.8 and f8 so we can clearly see the difference. Okay, 100%, 100%. Okay, just check here how much is better the lens at f.8. And if we have a look at the ages of the frame, I think is quite visible the difference, how soft it is at 2.8. And how good is that uh, F8 also on the right side here and here, okay. Just check out here and here how the lens is very good at F.8. About chromatic aberration, I think is easily fixable, just uh, you need to Activate chromatic aberration, give an analyze, and the chromatic aberration is completely gone. There is no, it's not more visible. Now let's check uh, um, flare resistance of this lens compared to the uh, Samyang F point. Uh, uh, sorry, 8 mm f 2.8. Same exposure, you can uh, notice that uh, the make is a little bit darker. I think there's a tiny bit of difference between the two lens on uh, the same exposure. You can check, check I use the same time ISO and aperture is f8 for both. So I think there's a tiny bit of discrepancy uh, or difference on uh, what's marked on the aperture and the rear aperture. By the way, talking about uh, flares, 
we can see the difference between the Samyang and the Meiki. We can see the flare here of the Samyang and a tiny, tiny bit of flare here on the Meiki. Uh, by the way, the sun light uh, rendering is way better on the Meiki, has a lot of more blades than the Samyang. And another shot where we can compare is this one. And uh, okay, right side is always the Samyang, left side is the Meiki. Also, here we have the classic Sammy Yang flare, the Korean flag, blue and red. And uh, here on the making, this situation gives a, gives a little bit of rainbow flare here, and uh, also a tiny bit of flare here. But you can see how on the edge, top uh, left edge is uh, the, the sun on this frame. Also notice the difference on the two um, lenses. The um, Samyang is uh, 180 degrees on the diagonal. The Meiki is 190 degrees on the diagonal. So it's a little bit harder on, to use it uh, under heavy sunlight since you have uh, 10 degrees less or more of um, uh, more uh, field of view on the lens. Let's, let's check uh, two other pictures here and here. This is also the Sanyang on the left, on the right side, sorry, and the Meiki on the left side. We can see a little bit of flare here on the Meiki and the classic Korean flare here on the Samyang and uh, another case of flare is this one and uh, you can see this is the worst case for the Meiki you can clearly see here that this cycle flare here this halo and uh, here the um, Samyang did a, a, a better job. We have just a tiny bit of halo here. And overall, in this case, with the sun in the center of the frame, I think Samyang is a little bit better. Still uh, just a tiny bit of flare here, but it's a lot more visible on the Meiki. These are extremely uh, hard shot uh, for a fisheye with the, the sun at the center. I don't think uh, you will ever shot with the sun uh, in the center, but uh, you know, these are tests, so I have to take this kind of, pic of pictures. Let's go back to a single frame to check the chromatic aberration of purple fringing. This is a shot with the sun on the edge of the frame and we can see the purple par fringing is well corrected even if I increase a tiny bit the shadows. Let's see here, okay, the shadow of 35. We can now see a little bit of flare here but it's more of the sun ray a tiny bit here, like a little circle here. But you can see the sun rendering is quite good and flares are not so bad. Maybe a little bit here, but it, they look like uh, um, an extended sun ray if you want to look it at the um, artistic side of his lens. Another shot uh, I did is this one. And this one, you can see even at 100, you can see a tiny bit of hello here, but, and chromatic aberration, tiny bit, but I think if we can correct 
clicking here and maybe give an analyze. Okay. We can already see that Capture One fixed this kind of chromatic operation. So it's nothing to worry about, in my opinion. Easy, easy, fixable. Here is nearly visible. And overall, the, the sharpness of this lens, I think, is really good. Really, really good, in my opinion. Especially if you shoot at uh, f.8. Now, a bonus for the infrared uh, pictures lover. This is a shot, this is a shot uh, with my Fujifilm x 3 full spectrum camera with the 830 uh, nanometers uh, infrared filter. So it's just visible, uh, in, sorry, it's just uh, uh, infrared, not visible light, it's pure black and white. And one nice thing of this lens is the lack or nearly lack of hot spots. This is shot at f.8. Uh, to be picky, probably f.6 is be the best for infrared. And uh, you can see it's lacking a tiny bit of contrast, even if I added a tiny bit, but nothing you, you cannot fix. Also, we can check here. You can see maybe you have a tiny bit of halo here, but honestly, it's very, very hard to see any heavy hot spot in this lens. I think it's one of the best fisheyes for infrared, in my opinion, uh, not talking about big brands like Nikon, Canon, and so on, as a third, third party um, fisheye, in my opinion, is one of the best for infrared images. And uh, so overall, I'm quite happy with uh, this lens. The overall image quality is uh, quite good, especially if you close down to f.8. And uh, if you like me, uh, you like to take uh, 360 pictures or equirectangular pictures, you will enjoy this lens, especially for the price is around 140, 150 euros. And comparing to the Samyang, uh, that it cost nearly the double, around 280 euros. I think the overall quality is uh, nearly comparable. Uh, maybe the Samyang is a little bit better but I think it's more related to the stereographic projection of the Samyang Fisheye than the overall quality. And um, the Meiki instead uh, has an equisolid projection and in my opinion this uh, gives a little bit of softness at the edges. If you want better quality you need to spend a lot more going to the Nikon 10.5 APS-C lens that probably is the top at the moment for the APS-C uh, fish eyes and, but uh, if you don't have a big budget and want to try a fish eye just for the sake of curiosity uh, for 150 euros I think the Meiki is one of the best fish eyes around uh, even better than the TT Artisan 7.5 and better than the 7 Artisan that uh, probably is the uh, probably is the lens that uh, make it rebranded because uh, at least on my sample the 7 Artisan has a, led, a lot more flare of flares uh, very heavy flares not uh, so controlled like the Meiki and uh, if you also want to start to do 360 or equisol, oh, I'm sorry, uh, 360 and equirectangular images, this is the lens to buy if you don't want to spend 280 euros for a Samyang. So I hope you enjoy this review and uh, see you soon on uh, my next review. Bye bye.